welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to have you with us today. Uh, if you're visiting us for the first time and uh, you've never been to KLC before, quickly just wave your hand. We'd like to give you a big welcome. We've got some visitors also from Pretoria. So let's give Marky welcome. Let's give him a big welcome here this morning. Nice. Good to have everybody here. Anybody have a birthday in the week? Was there anybody had birthdays? Was there anybody? That's why you were going on about that. Eh? I missed that. Come on, let's give him a big, big hand. Monique, start, start. It's a believe. Come on. If you had a birthday, please stand. This, of course, babe. Of course, of course. Yesterday, it was a busy week. Eh? We had no birthdays in the first service, all the birthdays in the second. Come on, let's stretch out your hands to them. Father, I thank you that as they celebrate their birthday, they celebrate life. May this year be a year of such incredible breakthrough and blessing and overflow in their life. I thank you for that, Lord. I bless them today in Jesus' name. And everyone say, amen. Come on, come on let's give them another big happy birthday. <laughs> then just quickly a few announcements that you've got to take note of. If you want to register for Bible school, registration is open for the 2024 starting in February. So please go to the info desk, get the info send out. We can also send you an online form. I think we've got that as well. So a digital form you can fill in or you can do it uh, old school and uh, you can do that. So we fill up, get into it um, and the kids can depart to children's church. So those kids who are still here, please go to the kids church. And then, uh, so please so sign up, get involved. It's going to be an awesome year for Bible school starting in February. Everything else kicks off in February as well. Youth is opening up. Young adults, small groups are opening up. We're launching some new small groups that are also available that you can join and connect and be part of what we're doing. And uh, we've got some new leaders being trained up to start that. So we're exciting, exciting, exciting year for 2024. Are you excited for this year? I'm super excited for this year. I think it's going to be it's going to be phenomenal. What you make of it is what it's going to be. What you decide in your heart this year is for you is what you're going to have. And the word that you're going to receive today, I know is going to bless you. So we're not going to get there yet. Um, I want you to grab your wallet, take out your money. We're going to do offering time right now. Is God a good God? I want to ask again, is God a good God? Does he take care of you? Has he been good to you? Then it's time to give. <laughs> if God is good, you know, then my heart should naturally be pulled towards giving to him and giving to his work, right? For God so loved the world that he what? So loving and giving go hand in hand. It's always hand in hand. If I love something, I give towards it. I give my attention. I give my heart. I give my time. I give my money into it because I love what God's doing. And if, and if that's true, then the one who loved us first did all the giving first. My re, everything else is a response to him. And here's the thing I want to give you. You can only receive a reward from what you're giving if you do it based on your own conviction. If I get up here or anybody gets up here and we got to get you to give, then there's no reward because then you gave on my conviction. Ouch. Amen. Senior Mora. Truth. Truth is I cannot live on somebody else's reality or somebody else's revelation. It's got to be my revelation. It's got to be something that I receive that I want to give. And it's not just based on what I'm saying. Hey, come on, come on. No moet jy gee, broer. Broer, no moet jy gee. As jy nie vandag gee nie. Dan vrek jy. I was in a service like that many years ago where the pastor took out his handkerchief and then he tied a knot and he said, if you do not give to this church, I bind your finances to this church. Hi, boy. And I see an open grave. That man said, Jesus. That was the biggest offering we've had in that church ever. <laughs> that's witchcraft. That's, that's manipulation. We don't do that kind of thing. We're here to provide a place. Say, come on, sow into God's kingdom and see what God can do for your life. But it's got to be your conviction because God so loved the world that he gave. It's precious. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for every seed that's on. I thank you for, for hearts that are blessed. I thank you for a blessed church. And I thank you for a church that walks in overflow. Lord, I pray this over every person today. May this year be a year of great abundance. May January, Lord, the month that has 300 days, Lord, may this 300-day month be blessed. 
May we truly experience even your hand at work, opening new doors, new things for us. And I call that over us, Lord. May we see your hand in January and in 2024. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So you can sew up front here. Well, there's card facilities on that or online there as well. And then we'll get to the rest of us. Thank you. And those are joining us online, thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Seed might leave our hand, but we'll never leave our life. Lord, we thank you for harvest and every seed sown, Lord, into people's lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Lord. So I'm super excited this morning. It wasn't announced because we only decided uh, after New Year's Eve that uh, my father-in-law would act father in love, as you said earlier. Father in love uh, passed away. We'll be ministering. Yeah, you you heard uh, Marleona come up and yeah, and uh, Pastor Leona, prayer warrior Ma. I give her I give her a lot of frights, so I have to repent in front of people. We, uh, we even during the week, I'll throw out some rubber snakes in the house and and some mounts and stuff. We've had so much fun at home, but it's been such a blessing to have them stay with us the last couple of days. And I, um, oh, it's been longer than that, a whole from Christmas onwards and. Uh, up and down, it's been fantastic to have them. And, and what a privilege this morning to have him come and minister to you this morning. He's been in ministry for close to 40 years now. Um, he's also the vice uh, president of the ACDP, man of God, father to his children, grandfather and soon-to-be grandfather to our little baby girl as well. And, and it's just a phenomenal man of God. And the word is going to bless you today. So come on, let's give him a massive welcome this morning as well. Uh, thank you, Sean. I want to again just acknowledge and thank you for the invitation to minister God's word. So uh, to Sean and uh, Pastor Dave, thank you so much. Uh, I'll be so, so good to be with family. Um, as I said this morning in the first service, uh, so glad to, to have been with my daughter Esther and her new husband. Yeah, um, uh, our, our son in love. Uh, not son-in-law. So uh, they've really treated us so well. We've, we've spent some good time recharging our batteries and we, we've, we felt like uh, kind of like royalty, you know, just sleeping in a bit when you want to and waking up, uh, you know, at, um, yeah, past, past waking up time. So it's, it's, been, it's been good. It's been good. It's a long time since I've, uh, since I've done that. And so it's been just such a, 
such a joy to be able to spend uh, spend good quality time uh, with family. So, um, also, I just want to thank the leadership as well of the church. Thank you for um, trusting me with the pulpit. I know that it's something that, if it's somebody that you haven't seen or haven't heard, uh, can be a bit of a daunting task for some. Uh, but thank you so much for the uh, thank you so much for the uh, for the privilege of being able to uh, to minister with and f uh, uh, to you this morning. Um, maybe when I, just before I start, just want to say that in the New Year's Eve service, uh, there was a word from, from your friend, uh, Connie, was it? Corey? Corey? And uh, he said something about your pastor, Sean. He said, pray for him because you have a great man of God. Amen. Now, you, you, know, you know that when you see, not just when you see the person ministering in church, but also when you see them in life. And so we were out yesterday and there was a young man and Sean called him and he says, I just sense that you're carrying, you've been carrying stuff, kind of carrying like a burden, a weight, but God is going to, God is going to break through for you. And I could see the, almost the tears welling up in the skies. And he was staring Sean in the face. I mean, he didn't take his eyes off him all of this time that Sean was speaking to him. And then Sean just began to minister. He says, you've been carrying this weight, but I want you to know that when you serve Jesus, when you give your life to Jesus, he opens doors for you. And then this young man began to unpack. And he says, well, I've been, I've been trusting God. I, I've, I've applied at this particular institution, educational institution. And uh, it seems as if things just didn't work out. That was so many years ago, and now I'm in this job. And, and, and I've, I've been wanting to do it again, and, and I want to apply again. And so, and so Sean just began to speak into his life. We out in a restaurant. <laughs> Nobody around us. It was just the two of us. The ladies had gone off somewhere. And it was just the two of us and, and the waiter. And spoke into that young man's life, spoke hope into his life. And, and so I want to just encourage you, you appreciate the man of God. Appreciate the men of God that you have. Appreciate the leaders that you have. And honor them. Amen. Honor them. Honor is preferential. God, it is God who prefers the man. Honor is personal. God chooses people to use, not things. It's personal. Honor is not given to cars. Honor is not given to houses. Honor is not given to chairs. Honor is given to persons. Honor is preferential. Honor is personal. Honor is practical. Do you know your pastor's birthdays? <laughs> Bless you. Do you know the anniversaries? You, you see where I'm getting honor is? practical. And, and so I want to encourage you to, to honor them because God has blessed you with some good, good leaders in this house. My daughter has chosen well. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Uh, are, we, are we good to go? Uh, we had a little bit of a, uh, had a little bit of a struggle this morning. Uh, so I pray that, and it looks like I'm having a little bit of a glitch here myself. All right. And I pray that we would be able to get this going uh, shortly. All right. So I want to speak to you this morning uh, on stages to spiritual success. And let me just, that's not what I called it. All right. That's not what I called up. I am... Uh, all right, I'm getting to something else here. All right, there we go. Uh, I want to speak to you this morning. Uh, it's, it's one of my other messages that popped up. I want to speak to you this morning about stages to spiritual success. And um, I want to use three, three words in a sense that um, I want to, to kind of cement the, uh, the word. And that is... Um, Reservation, 
retraction, and then release. And I want to use the as a text this morning, uh, book of Psalms, Psalms 127. And we're going to read from verses 3 to 5. Um, I, I like that. I like that. If people get excited in this church when you speak about the word. All right? I need to take this home. I need to take this home and share with our folk uh, at, uh, at Kingdom uh, Light Church. They get excited when the word is mentioned. So, all right. So, let's, uh, won't you stand with me? It's on the screen. Let's read together. Uh, Psalms 127, verses 3 to 5. All right, and the word of God reads and says, Sons are. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. Thank you, Father, for the power that there is in your word. Thank you, Father, that your word illuminates. Your word brings light. Your word, Father, casts out all darkness. We thank you, Father, now for the illumination of your word to come. We thank you that your word, Father, comes and brings fruit, more fruit, and much fruit. We thank you, Father, that your word, Lord, now becomes like manna, now becomes the sustenance on which we depend. Feed us, O oh God, this morning with your word, with manna from heaven. May we feed from you, Lord, none of myself, but all of you, that you, Father, this morning be glorified in and through your word, in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Bless you. Bless you as you take your seats. All right. Stages to spiritual success in 2024. And so let me also take this opportunity and, uh, and just say on behalf of my wife, family, and our local church, Kingdom Connect Ministries, KCM. Um, and also just wish you all a blessed, blessed new year if we did not get that opportunity uh, to do so when uh, on, new Year's, on New Year's Eve. So uh, from my family to yours, uh, and I wish, I wish everything that I wish for my family, I wish for your family. All right, so the Lord bless you in this year 2024. Um, when we look at the, the, the scripture, Children, sons are a blessing, a heritage. And the psalmist goes on and he says, Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. I have at least three in my quiver. Actually, a little bit more now. I should, I should you know, Leon and I have three kids. And, uh, but we also have three grandkids. Well, three and a half. No, three and what, three and uh, eight ninths, <laughs> almost there. Um, and, and so um, the Lord has blessed us with some grandkids, and then also uh, the Lord has blessed us with some children in love, all right? So we have Kirsten and we have Sean, and so we, we, our quiver is getting full. And so the Bible says, blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. Now let's have a look at this, this quiver. Focus on, on the quiver. The quiver is essentially a place where arrows are kept. The quiver is a place, um, as we learn from the archer, uh, the, where the, the archer keeps his quiver, the, the arrows in the quiver. It's at the back of the archer. And so whenever he wants to shoot, he would take an arrow from the quiver, and then he would shoot that quiver off. All right? So, so this is the place, uh, shoot the arrow off. So the, the quiver is the place where uh, the, the, uh, the, the arrows are kept. And the archer ensures that he takes care of the quiver because if the quiver is full of holes, then the arrow will fall through. And when it's time for the archer to use the quiver, he will not be able to do so. So quiver, in a sense, is a place of, of almost like incubation. Um, and so right now, our granddaughter Mila is in the place of incubation. Uh, right now, our granddaughter is in that place of, of being kept, 
All right? So we need to ensure that, that those things that, that God is wanting to, to incubate, that in our quivers, whatever it is that God is incubating in your life, ensure, ensure that the quiver, the place in which it is being incubated, uh, is, is a safe place. It is not a place that has holes in it. It is not a place where that which is supposed to be bought, birthed forth uh, is aborted because it is not kept safe. So ensure that the place that God wishes to birth things in you, birth things through you, is a place uh, that is solid, is a place uh, th that, that God himself has cemented and that the Holy Spirit has surrounded. And so, and so the quiver is this particular place where the arrows are kept. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. Uh, so I, I, I pray this morning that even as we continue with this particular word, uh, that, that you in 2024, as we look at these different stages, that in 2024, wherever you may find yourself, you will understand that God is taking you to another level. God is taking you uh, to, to an exponential increased level, all right? As a, as a maths teacher, there's a word, you know, you have, you have a, a linear equation, uh, then you have a quadratic equation, and then you have an exponential equation. Uh, so the, the linear equation, y equals mx plus c, it's a straight line. The quadratic equation, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, that kind of is the, is the parabola. But the exponential equation, y equals a to the power x, the exponential equation, it is something that takes off exponentially. The increase is rapid. The increase is, is out of this world. And so I pray that in 2024, your increase, your increase will be exponential. Not just linear, not parabolic, but an exponential increase in 2024. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. Now, the first stage that I want to speak about is a stage of reservation. The archer does not just use his quiver or use his arrows um, needlessly. He takes care to ensure that the arrow, uh, he only uses the arrow when it's, when it's needed. And so the arrow to a large extent is kept in a place of reservation. To a large extent, I think also children are in that particular place. Mila right now is in a place of reservation. Mila is kept in Esther's quiver. Mila is being kept safe. Uh, but there's going to come a time also as a little child when Mila is born, then she has to be kept also in reservation because you cannot release her too soon. You, you cannot retract, allow her. So there has to be a little bit of a retraction. Mila, don't do that. Mila, don't do that. No, 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 Mila, that's not for you. And so there's going to be a little bit of retraction before she is released into her potential and before she's released into her destiny. So these three, I'm kind of giving you a snapshot of, of the message. Uh, there's the reservation, there's the retraction, and then there's the release. Let's look at the reservation. So reservation, is a, the quiver is a place where arrows wait to be used. Now, I, I shared this morning and I said, uh, I found it strange. I was kind of going through the, the groupings, the collective nouns, I think is what they call it in English. Um, you know, you, you have a a school of fish. You have a flock of, uh, you have a what of crows, a murder of crows. You have a what of doves, a covenant of doves. And then when it comes to gorillas, you have a parliament of gorillas. <laughs> Lord, help us. <laughs> and Lord, help me. <laughs> All right. And so here, a quiver of arrows. The arrows are kept within the quiver, but, but the quiver also is a place of possibilities. 
The quiver is a place of potential. It's a place of patience. The quiver is a place where potential is galvanized before action. The quiver is the place where in this place of reservation, the arrow is kept. Are you able to wait? God has something in store for you. God has a plan for you. God has a, a, your destiny in his hands. God knows exactly a future for you. But, but are you prepared to wait in this place of reservation? And so within the quiver, the arrow is kept. It's a place of reservation. It's a place of possibilities, but it's also a place of patience. And very often we want to run ahead. We want to run ahead of God. Lord, you spoke to me. Lord, I, you've given me a word. You haven't spoken to your, your leaders, but Lord, you've given me a word and I'm going. And as Sean indicated uh, on the 31st of January this year, I will be 40 years ministering God's word. I gave my heart to the Lord at the age of 21 years old, 1984. Now you can calculate, right? And some of you are already calculating, ping, 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 ping. How old is he? You know, 61, right? This year. And so it'll be 40 years ministering God's word. And I've seen how some have run ahead of God because they did not consult with their leadership. I want to share with you that there's been a few occasions where I've been asked to go against leadership. I was still at the time within the church. I was kind of one of the elders in the church. I was assistant pastor at the time. I was an assistant pastor. And one of the, one of the leaders came and says, you know what? I think we need to take over. Wayne, I think you should be the pastor of the church. I said, brother, you do not speak against the man of God. That's God's man. That's God's servant. He was a little old at the time, but he was my spiritual mentor. He was the man who spoke into my life over the years. He was not a perfect man, but he was the man that God called. Touch not, I said to him, the anointed of God. And so at that particular time, he wanted me to take over. He said, can you see, it's, it's, it'll be easy for us to do this. The people will naturally flock to you. You're the leader, man. Wayne, you're the leader. You're the man. But even back then, even though I did not know, but I was still in a place of reservation. It was not my time. Yes, I was doing so many things in the church. I was planning the programs. I was doing it. I was running. I was teaching. I was preaching. We were evangelizing. But it was not my time to lead. And so it's absolutely important that you and I understand when God places us in a place of reservation to know that we're in this place of waiting, but we're in this place of waiting for a purpose. And so reservation is a place where potentials are galvanized before action. Reservation is a place of understanding that you must be held back. That you must be held back from the abuse or even the misuse of your skills, your abilities, your talents. Because, because yes, you, 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 you may be anointed. Yes, you may be called. Yes, there may be gifts in your life. Yes, there may be, you, you, you may be one of the most skilled people. But God is saying, not yet. And if God is saying, not yet, then I want to encourage you. If you see yourself as being in this place of reservation, I want to encourage you, Wait. Do not abort, let not 2024 be a year where, where, where the, the plan that God has for you is aborted. But let 2024 be the year that when the release comes, you will know that it was good to have waited. And so reservation is the place of, of understanding that you must be held back from the abuse or the misuse of your skills, your abilities, your talents, and you patiently... Wait for the right moment. Patiently wait for the right moment where God is able to take you to your best and your highest level ever. But can you be patient? And are you prepared to wait in this place of reservation? 
to ignore the reservation stage to spiritual success in 2024, to ignore the reservation stage is to damage and to court disaster, is to damage the end result. I, I did a teaching uh, in, in the local church. Uh, the teaching was just, uh, just before coming down, it's transformation, confirmation, transformation. And when we look at the word transformation, the word transformation is from the, the Greek word metamorphu. Metamorphu, the word meta, meaning when you are, after you've been with. Change, meta, change comes after you have been with. And then the morphu part means what happens on the inside is now shown on the outside. So after you've been with him, after you have been with him, what has happened on the inside now begins to show on the outside. All right? The metamorphosis stage. But, but if, if when one studies the lifestyle of a caterpillar or a butterfly, if that butterfly, and I don't know about you, but when we were young, we kept silkworms. Who sell an African for a silkworm? Saverum. Saverum. A saverum. I get so by if I nari saverums had it. I get my clean little boxy da had it. Elka da ex da and like cabbage leaves and so on. I can't not have these saverums, but I have these... Who's a leaf now? A what is it? A blar, yeah. I have cabbage blars. I have eat, I have eat, I have eat. Those, those, they eat so much. And then all of a sudden, they become, they become those little tiny silkworms, saverums, become so big and fat. And it, then you know that it's time for the transformation. And they begin to spin cocoons. And that little silkworm, it goes, it spins a cocoon around itself. And the science tells us that the, 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 the tissue of the silkworm actually almost, it becomes a mushy soup. And then from that mushy soup, the tissue, the wings begin to develop and the head and the abdomen, the eyes and the legs begin to develop. But there's an, the amazing thing. If that caterpillar is taken out of the cocoon beforehand, it will never fly. And as a little child, I, would, I sometimes couldn't wait. I, I would say, no, this thing has been in here too long. And I would actually take a blade. And I would cut the cocoon slowly, delicately cut it open. Because I said, no, man, I need to free it. It needs to fly. The butterfly, the caterpillar, the moth actually is what it would be. It needs to fly. And now it's been in here too long. Elke dag, ek kijk in hierdie box. Hai, hy is hier vry nie. Ek kijk nie. Hy is nog daar in daar die cocoon. And so I could not wait, and so I would take a blade, and I would cut it open. And yes, it would come out, and soon after that, it would die. One of the things I discovered, I, I, I majored in biology when I was at, at college, and one of the things I discovered so many, many years later is that that struggle process when the cocoon, there's a little hole that is made in the front. And then the caterpillar or the moth has to squeeze through. It has to struggle through. But as it squeezes through, all of the juices that are in the wings are pressed out. And it is that squeezing through that tiny little hole that then enables it to fly. But if you take it out and there is no pressing through. If you take it out and there is no striving through. If you take it out and there is no struggle in that place of reservation, then, then that particular moth will never fly because it has been taken out before its time. And sometimes we want to get out of our place of reservation. 
when God is saying, hold on, when God is saying, just a little longer, you, you're almost there, you're not ready. I'm reminded of a story of a man in Australia, a true story, a miner who has been working in this mine, a gold mine, digging for gold year after year, 20 years and almost 30 years or so, he's digging for gold and then it was with the pickaxe and so on. And finally, after about 20, 30 years, he says, genoeg. Ek is nere, ek is nou klaar. Ek het hier so hard gewerk het. Da's geen goutie in hierdie mijn. Ek gaan nou huis toe. Ek vat my pick en my shovel. Ek weet nie wat die Engelse, die Afrikaanse woord is. Ek vat my pick en my shovel en ek gaan huis toe. And he gave up. And he went home. Sold the mine for next to nothing. The person who bought the mine took the pick and with one or two hits against the rock struck gold. He was too impatient. He could not endure in his place of reservation. And so in 2024, if you are in a place of reservation, I want to encourage you, hold on. Hold on, my brother. Hold on, my sister. Don't give up. Don't give up because victory is on its way. Victory is on its way. Don't give up. Giving children anything prematurely is not a blessing. You, you wouldn't want to give your guitar to a three-year-old to play with. Pull the strings. Bang it. Take a hammer. What sound does this make on the guitar? It's premature. And so giving, having something prematurely is never good for us. And God is the one who knows what's good for you. He knows what's good for me. And he will not give anything. A good father will not give anything to his son or to his daughter prematurely. Just as some sexual relationships are reserved or sexual relationships are reserved for married adults, not children, many other things are also not good if given prematurely. And so in a place of reservation, you be patient. Exercise the spiritual gift of patience. But during this place and during this stage of reservation, a stage to spiritual success, remember that during reservation, God's, the, the delay does not mean denial. Just because there's a delay does not mean that God is not on his way. So God's delay is never his denial. He, he's just saying, hang on. You know, look, God answers in three ways. He says no. We were about, I was about to buy a property many years ago. And so I actually got, got the money. I was ready to buy this property. And then Leona says to me, did you pray? I said, no, I didn't. She says, well, I think we need to just ask God whether this is the right thing to do. And so I said, okay, let's, let's, let's pray. So let's pray about it. I mean, everything was in place. All I needed to do was just sign the papers and property was mine. And so we prayed. And so the Lord gave me a scripture uh, in, in the book of Peter, I think it was. And the Lord spoke to Leona in the book of Numbers. But the same thing. The path that you have chosen is a dangerous one. And so when I woke up, I said, hey, Lee, this is the scripture that God gave to me. She says, well, I was reading it in Numbers, the same scripture. Was it of Balak and, Balak and Balaam? All right. The path that you have chosen is a dangerous one. And so God said, no. So I canceled the deal. And so God has answered. He says, no. We sometimes don't like it. And it's so important that when God speaks to us and he says, no, don't. And then he says, wait. And that is where we need to be able to have the spiritual ears to hear God speak. When he says, wait, not now. Wait. And then he says, yes. So essentially three ways. No, 
Wait. Yes. All right, so those are the, the three ways. But, but are we prepared to wait? When God says, not now. Remember, his delay is not his denial. Because you have to wait does not mean it's not coming. Just because you have to wait a little longer does not mean that, that help is not on its way. Does not mean that your dream is not going to be answered. Does not mean that your business is not going to be open. Does not mean that you are not going to be able to get into that university or get that vehicle or get that house. Whatever the desire of your heart is that, that God wants to give to you. But can you be patient in this place? of reservation but also are you are you ready are you ready are you ready for 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 the answer when the answer comes are you ready when the promotion comes are you ready when the miracle comes are you ready when the business comes are you ready when that husband that you have been praying for comes are you ready when the wife that you are, have been praying for comes it's Jake Are you ready? Ek moet een bykie versichtig wees met my Afrikaans wat daar spateek jyre want ek hier verkeerde ding sê. So, okay. Are you ready? Are you ready for what is about to happen? Do you have a system in place? I'm old-fashioned. So when Sean said to me that, came to ask for Esther's hand in marriage, kind of looked at him, said, you want to come for my daughter? No, nah, no, nah, I didn't. <laughs> I smiled and I said, okay, you know, I'm kind of old fashioned. And, I, and one of the things I said to Sean, I said, you know, I, I believe that it's the man's role to provide. I believe that it's the man's role. Are you able to provide for my daughter? Are you able to take care of my daughter? And he said to me, I'm not sure he was calling me then Pastor Wayne or Uncle Wayne or whatever it was. But he said to me, yes, I, I'm prepared and I can. And I think that Dave was there too. He says, I believe the same thing. Essentially, the husband needs to prepare for the wife. And that ha that's how it was Old Testament history. The husband would go, sometimes two years, three years, he's building the house, but it was the father. In Jewish custom, it was the father who would say, you are now ready, go and call your bride. The father, sometimes the, the husband, the young man would say, pa, ek is nou gereed, ek gaan, ek gaan my, my, my wife, my, my vrou. <laughs> I said to you, my Africans, my wifey, all right, I'm going to get my wife. And the father would say, you are not ready. You are not ready. You think your house is in place, but I know that you are not ready. You've got to do this. Look at that room. That, that room is not fit for your wife to come in just yet. <laughs> and so the father would say, not yet. So are you ready? <laughs> If God, in this, in this place of reservation, are you ready for what God is about to do? Are you prepared for the demands, the demands also that come? Often, there's a saying in English, um, weary is the head that wears the crown. Because very often we want pro promotion, but we're not prepared for the challenges and the demands that come with the promotion. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we pray, Lord, promotion, <laughs> Lord, business, <laughs> Lord, my husband, Lord, my wife, <laughs> Lord, this, and, and we're praying for these things, but are you ready for the demands that come with it? Yes. And so it's one of the reasons why God will keep us in this place of reservation. And so we need more than just faith to handle God's blessings. 
You see, we also need when the blessings do come and the promotion comes, we also need wisdom, we need works, we need willingness to learn to manage, to manage what we have received from God. Now, understand this. God may give you what you uh, have been asking for, but you and I have to manage it. Because what you cannot manage, you will not keep. What you cannot manage, you will lose. You cannot manage your car, you will lose it. You know who said that? All right. You cannot manage your car, you will lose it. You cannot manage your money, you will lose it. Your money will run from you if you do not know how to manage it. You, you cannot manage your business, you will lose it if you do not know how to manage it. And men, if you do not know how to manage your wife, look after your wife. And wife, if you do not know how to manage your husband. So whatever you do not manage you, you lose. And so in this place of reservation, it's, it's also an opportunity of reflection. Am I ready? Lord, yes, I desire this, but am I ready? Then after this phase of reservation where God keeps you, he holds you back, just like a little child has to be at times held back, especially when they're that terrible twos, two, three, when they're touching everything, grabbing everything, Alice and Imont. Worms and Alice. <laughs> and so you have, to, you have to be there to manage the child, watch the child, to keep the child so that the child does not bring harm to itself. It's a place of reservation. The next phase is a phase of retraction. And this phase of retraction sometimes can be more painful than the phase of reservation. The, the phase of reservation, sometimes we kind of feel that we are ready and God says no. We feel that we're ready, perhaps the leadership says no. We feel that we're ready and perhaps uh, your superiors at work say no. We feel that we're ready in the church and perhaps your pastors say no. And then after you've received this no, you're not ready, you are pulled back even further. And this is a, a place of, of retraction, and this is where many lose it, in this place of retraction. Pardon me, but you, you and I must realize that before the release stage can be enjoyed, before we are released into our potential and into our destiny, before we are released, we all need to go through a phase called retraction. Because in retraction, the arrow that was in the quiver is now pulled out. It was in reservation. The arrow is now pulled out. It is put into the bow and it is pulled back. Before it can be released, it has to be retracted. It has to be pulled back. There is a retraction that, that has to take place. And at times, it may seem as if your, your, the goal that you've set for yourself is right before you. And it's like you're taking one step forward, and then it's two steps back. <laughs> and just as it seems as if you, your goal is attainable and you're about to receive it, it's two, three steps back. Lord, what's going on? Why is, why is this retraction taking place? And so this is a, a stage of retraction where the bow is pulled. And I want you to understand this one thing, that it is normal to retract before release. It is normal for you to go through these periods of sometimes betrayal, sometimes others doubting you, sometimes others belittling you, sometimes others kind of purposefully trying to derail your process where there's that retraction. And it is important that sometimes we go through these particular periods, this period of retraction. 
and those who have experienced major setbacks in life, those, those who are retracted further, those who have been pulled back the furthest, are often the ones when released, go the furthest. <laughs> they are shot further because of and not in spite of the setback or the retraction that they, so because of the retraction, it is the retraction that causes you to be shot further. And so do not despise even this place of retraction. You see, without retraction, the release does not have the same effect. Sean was playing with an elastic and uh, with, the, with the kids, uh, our grandkids. And so he's come, let me show you. And he put the elastic, he did something with it, he put it around. And then as he pulled it, he shot it. The first time I think it slipped and it just plumped. Because the retraction was not, the traction and the retraction was not there. But the moment he was able to get that retraction primed, and he pulled the elastic band, and when he released it, that elastic band shot forward. And the further the retraction, the further the release, the further that particular projectile would go. And so you may be in a place of retraction, but I want you to know your release is coming. And when God releases you, it's going to be something powerful. It's going to be something out of this world. When God releases you into your destiny, into your ministry, into your business, whatever it is that you've been praying for, it is going to be something that you yourself are going to be shocked at. Because in this place of retraction, sometimes you begin to doubt yourself. Is it going to happen? Lord, I've been waiting so long. Lord, have you forgotten me? Lord, I've been serving you. It's now 10 years, Lord. But it seems as if my prayers are just hitting the ceiling. Lord, how long? How long, Lord? How much longer must I continue praying? How much longer must I continue going through, <clears throat> pardon me, the, the pain that I'm experiencing? <clears throat> Lord, how much longer? Lord, the pain is, is, is getting a little bit too intense. Lord, I'm, I'm being retracted to a point where I feel like I'm about to break. Lord, how much longer? But you need to understand in those moments that the longer you, God is, keeps you in that place of retraction, when he releases you, like an arrow that pierces the darkness, <laughs> And darkness itself has to flee from you when his release comes. Retraction. Our setbacks in life can be used and must be used and should be used as a catalyst for achieving in life. Every setback you use as a setup for a comeback. <laughs> Every setback use as a setup for a comeback. You see those athletes, some of them who've had setbacks in life, and then they come into those tracks and they put, they, they kind of get ready, they go into the tracks and they're on your marks and he goes down and, and as he's down on his knees in those tracks, I, I've been injured, I've been off for so many years, I've had this injury, I don't know whether I'm going to, but I'm going to give it my best shot. I've now come back, I'm now back from injury, I'm in this particular track and, and when the, the gun goes off and... <laughs> from the setback to a comeback. And so, so the, the, the agony that we face, the, the pain that we go through, use it as a setup for your comeback. There's no crown without a cross. And sometimes we want the crowns, but we forget Jesus said, whoever wants to follow me must pick up his. He didn't say pick up your crown. <laughs> So there's no crown without a cross. And for every believer, there is a cross that we, have to, that we have to carry. It is the agony in life 
that can be used to create the ecstasy, the spiritual euphoria that only God can give through your agony, in your place of reservation, in your place of retraction. You can turn the agony into a spiritual, phenomenal process that only the Holy Spirit can do in and through you. For believers, salvation was procure, procured only after crucifixion, a place of reservation, a place of retraction. In retraction, aiming is a part of the retraction stage. And so it's important that in this retraction that you also set your aim correctly because if you aim at nothing, you're sure to hit it all the time. If you aim, as you aim at Afrikaans, as you aim at nix, as you muk for nix, that's mooi Afrikaans. As you muk for nix, if you aim at nothing, you will get nothing all the time. Dan kry jy nix. And so it is important that even in this retraction stage, that, that we are, there's something, there's a goal that we have in mind. That we keep our eyes fixed as a flint on the goal that God has given to us. That we will not be removed. We will not be swayed. We will come what may. Come high water, come storms, come what the, whatever it is that the enemy may throw at us. I will not be moved. And so, in this retraction Phase aiming is important, but it also takes strength and it takes discipline not to release the arrow too soon. Because if the arrow is released too soon, then it falls just here, and then all of that pain and agony and retraction misses the target because it is released too soon. And so I want to encourage you, be patient. Be patient until the time is right. And then your release will be strategic. Your release will be powerful. Your release will have the effect that is desired. It is the tension in the bow that allows the arrow to, re to, to reach its target and to hit bullseye. It is the tension. And sometimes we are, perhaps right now you're in this tension, this conflict. What do I do? Where do I go? How much longer? Where's the next bit of money going to come from? How are we going to pay this particular bill? How are we going to cover these me medical bills? How are we going to cover the school fees, college, university? And so there's that little bit of tension. But it is the tension that also causes the arrow to be shot further. So don't despise the tension. Don't despise the reservation. I want to share with you just before I go to release how for 20 years I was kept in a place of reservation and retraction. Uh, in 1999, I uh, put my name forward, nominated. I was nominated and went sent forward for a, a position at National Parliament, 1999. I was one of the junior members then in the party in the ACDP and uh, 1999, my name went forward, I didn't get in, 1999. 2004, put my name forward. Then I, I was now kind of also growing up in the ranks. I was now the, from the provincial chair, as a provincial leader, so leading, leading in the province, so thinking, right, I'm now the provincial leader. Now I'm not 2004, name goes forward uh, for nominations for the elections and for a position at national provincial parliament. Don't get in. 2009. 2009, I'm now provincial leader, done the provincial chair, done the provincial leader. I'm now the federal council of provinces chair. I'm chairing the, all of the provinces. The FCOP, chairman of the FCOP. I'm chairing all of the provinces. No secret. Now I'm ready. So where were we now? 2009. Now I'm ready. My name goes forward. 
I've got all of the, I'm leading the provinces. Surely the people are all going to say, no, Wayne must go. 2009 comes, Ian. Nothing. 15 years. 2014 comes. I'm now the deputy president from chairman of a branch, provincial chairman, then provincial leader, then FCOP chairman. <laughs> I'm now the deputy president. I was elected in 2010. 2014. I'm more than ready. If ever there's a time, if ever there's a time that I was ready, it is now. I've been through the ranks. I've, been, I've covered all of the bases. I'm ready. 2014 is my moment. 2014 comes. It was as if the Lord was saying, you're not ready. You're not ready. You think you're ready. You see, what God is interested in is, is the developing of our character. And sometimes, what, essentially, character speaks to your integrity. And integrity is who you are when no one is looking. <laughs> who you are when no one is looking. For the young people, the children that are here, who you are when mommy and daddy are not at home speaks to your integrity. Who you are when the boss is not there <laughs> speaks to your integrity and your character. Who you are when pastor's not around. <laughs> because when pastor's there, oh, praise the year of pastor. <laughs> the service was so powerful. Oh, you know, it, I just wish we could have another praise and worship session. As soon as pastor's gone out the door, what did you do? Do you see And so, character is more important than your charisma. Because your charisma speaks to the outward. <laughs> the charisma speaks to how you look. Charisma speaks to how you dress. Charisma speaks to how you talk. Charisma speaks about how you walk. Charisma speaks about how you... The externals. But God is interested in your character. I think the Afrikaans of what is character. Is it? God is interested in your character. Character. And it is so important. I thought I was ready. 20 years working in the so-called trenches. And God said, not yet. I did a teaching many years ago on the life of Joseph. Joseph was pitted, potted, and imprisoned. Pitted. Potted, prisoned, thrown into a pit by his own brothers. You know, he had this dream. <laughs> Your sheaves are going to bow before mine. This, even the sun and the moon are going to bow before me. I'm the man. I had this dream. God showed me. I'm the one. Don't you see it? Don't you know it? God spoke to me <laughs> as a young man. And he shared this, his dream with the brothers. Be careful who you share your dreams with. Yeah. He spoke prematurely. He was still in that place of reservation. And he was now already speaking as if he was there. And his brothers became jealous and they pitted him. They threw him into a pit. After he was thrown into a pit, he comes into Potiphar's house. Potiphar promotes him. And perhaps Joseph thought, well, maybe this is it. Now I'm, I'm the head of Potiphar's house. I've arrived. Maybe this is where God was taking me. I've arrived. And then hmm, he meets Mrs. Potiphar. <laughs> hmm. 
What do you do, men? Let me speak to the men quickly. What do you do when you meet Mrs. Potiphar? God has kept me for my wife only. He's kept me for her only. And there have been Mrs. Potiphar's that have come. <laughs> they have. We were having supper. I left my charger at home and I mentioned we were at uh, a combined meeting can't remember a political meeting and my wife wasn't there. I had left my charge and I said, oh, I left my charge at home. After supper, I go to my bedroom and then there's a knock on the door. One of the ladies overheard that I left my charger and she comes with the charger and she says, I heard you wanted a charger. That was Mrs. Potiphar. And I saw her for who she was. Donkey for the charger, goodbye. Close the door. You don't need Mrs. Potiphar as your charger. <laughs> Joseph was pitted, potted. And then as if to add insult to injury, he was prisoned. And perhaps he thought it was then all over. But those of us who are Bible students know the story. Pharaoh had a dream. And the wine steward who was released says, I know a man who interprets dreams. He's in prison. He'll be able to interpret the dream. And Joseph is taken from prison to prime minister, pitted, potted, prisoned, prime minister. Pitted, potted, prison, promoted. <laughs> because he was able to understand the process that God was taking him through. It was a process of reservation. It was a process of extreme retraction. But when his release came, no one could stop him, not even Pharaoh. <laughs> there's, there's another message, Brother Dave, uh, that I preach, um, stages in the believer's life. Four stages, place of small beginnings, uh, place of character building, uh, place of promotion, selection, promotion, and then a place of rest. David had to go through all of those four stages. Place of small beginnings, Bethlehem, place of small beginnings. First Samuel chapter 16, while in Bethlehem, even David's father did not recognize him. Seven sons had come before Samuel. My wife spoke about Samuel earlier. Seven of Jesse's sons come before Samuel. <laughs> And Samuel has to ask Jesse, do you not have another son? It was almost as if his own father did not know about him. It was almost as if David's own father forgot that he had another son. Because this son was in a place of reservation. It was a place of, for David, it was a place of small beginnings, but it was a place where David practiced with his sling. It was a place where David, with his sling, uh, he, he practiced also. While practicing with his sling, he was practicing for Goliath. Maybe he did not know. It was a place where David defeated the bear and, and, the, and the lion. At his place of small beginnings. At his place 
of reservation. In your place of reservation, we should not be moping and groping and complaining and mumbling and grumbling. In the place of reservation, we should see it as a place of growth. We should see it as a place of contemplation of what God is able to do. In your place of reservation, you should be dreaming about the bigger things to come and preparing for those things that God is about to do in and through you. In your place of reservation, or in David's case, a place of small beginnings. In David then has to flee to Adullam because the ladies are singing, Saul has killed his thousands, but David, his tens of thousands. He now has to go to a rough place from the palace to the wilderness. Running from Saul, fleeing from King Saul who wanted to kill him. This was David's place of now character building. On two occasions, David had the ability to kill Saul. But he did not. Because it was there that David says, touch not the anointed of the Lord. One of David's men says, see, there's Saul. He, he's, they came into the cave. He came to relieve himself. Saul and David and his men were hiding and, this, and one of David's men said, see, God has given your enemy into your hands. Give me one word and I will kill him. Just one word, David, you are king. One word, exalam. Hear my native word. And David turns to the man and he says, touch not the anointed of God. What David did was he cut just a piece of Saul's garment when Saul was relieving himself in the cave. He took his knife and he cut a piece of Saul's garment. But after Saul left, David was aggrieved that he even cut Saul's garment. It grieved David's heart. The man was wanting to kill him. But David's honor for Saul was so great that he, he dared not touch the anointed of God. It was a place of character building. When God saw that, he says, Jais amper gereed. Jais amper gereed. And then finally, he comes to a place where God says in uh, Chronicles, I think it is, no, second, in 2 second Samuel, 2 second Samuel chapter 2, God says, now go up to Hebron. And so from Bethlehem, a place of small beginnings, to Adullam, the place of character building, to Hebron, God says, now go up. Now's your time of elevation. Now's your time of promotion. David received a secret anointing. Nobody knew of his anointing as king. It was just his family. Saul, Samuel anointed him with the horn of oil. No one knew. It wasn't the whole of Israel. The whole of Israel weren't there. He's been anointed king privately. When God does something in your life privately, shh, shh, Because it may just be your place of reservation. David did not go and say, I'm a king, not Saul. I was anointed king. Get rid of Saul. David kept quiet. And so from a place of a private anointing at Hebron, he now has a public anointing. God will take you from that private place. To your public place if only you are able to endure at your place of retraction and reservation let me conclude with this Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane prayed he knew that his very own were about to betray him Judas, who dipped his hand with the bread as they were taking part in the Last Supper, Jesus says, this, this is the one. Judas says, me, Lord, and then he ran out. And then did exactly as Jesus said would happen. And sold Jesus, betrayed him. Peter, who said, Lord, I will never, I will never, I will die with you. says, before the clock 
the cock crows three times. Before the cock crows, you would have bet betrayed me three times. Peter betrayed him. And when he was on the cross, none of his disciples were there except the woman. To the ladies out there, yeah. <laughs> Keep standing. Keep standing. But Jesus went through a place of not just a reservation as a little boy. Even at 12, he says, my time has not come. Well, at the wedding feast at Cana, my time has not come. And so Jesus understood his time. Kairos moment. But while he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he sweated drops of blood. And they came and they arrested him and they spat in his face. And when they spat in his face, from being the son of God who raised the sick, healed, healed those who were, uh, who were sick and raised the dead and opened blinded eyes and performed miracles, they spat in his face. The very ones that he had ministered to, he was retracted. And they took their clenched fists as they were taking him to the high priest and they punched him in the face and he was retracted. <laughs> they called him names and they said all manner of things against him and he was retracted. He was taken to Caiaphas, the high priest, and he was retracted. They cried out, blasphemy, and he must be crucified, and he was retracted. He was taken, and he was asked, and the people were asked, who do you want, Barabbas or Jesus? And the crowds cried, give us Barabbas, crucify him, and he was retracted. And they took him and they placed him upon the cross and they whipped him until the skin of his back was peeled and his bones were made bare and he was retracted even further. They took him to the cross and they nailed him to the cross, hands and feet nailed to the cross. A crown of thorns placed upon his head. And as the cross was placed into its hollow, it was thumped that every nerve and every fiber in his body shook and racked with pain. And he was even further retracted. And as he hung on the cross in pain and in agony, and as they mocked him, you say that you are the son of God. Come down from there if you are the son of God. And darkness covered the earth and there was thunder and lightning and it seemed as if even God had forsaken him. And Jesus cried, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he was further retracted and it was almost as if the enemy was gloating. But what the enemy did not know was that the further that God Christ was retracted the further that he was pulled back on that cross as he was pulled back on that cross as he was retracted on that as God allowed him to go through that process of retraction a release was coming and that release is the reason why you and I sit here this morning. It's because Jesus understood that he had to go through this process of reservation, this process of retraction before his release came. And so right now you may be in one of those phases either reservation and you've been kept there for a long time retraction or you saying Lord now how much longer how much longer must I wait how much longer is it going to be Lord 2024 is now here I want to encourage you this morning 
And as you go through and as you endure your phase of reservation and your phase of retraction, I want to declare to you this morning that 2024 will be your year of release, your, your year of growth, your year of exponential increase that only God can give. But let's be faithful in our place of reservation and retraction. God bless you. Sure, thank you. Come on, that's powerful. We can give God another praise for that. Woo. You know, when Paul was sharing about this stuff, even in the first service, when you've been around church for a long time, you've heard a lot of sermons. I've grown up in church. Many of you sitting here, you've grown up, you've been around church. You know there's certain sermons that when you hear it, you know that word needs to be heard by everyone. But you know where it should start? Here first. Because in all the years, there have been moments where you think, wow, man, I'm just flying right now. It's just... I'm, I've got the dream, I've got the vision, it's going. I'm quoting all the scripture, name it, claim it, frame it. I've got it all together. And then it doesn't happen. That's when you need this word. When it doesn't go the way you thought it would go. When you've done everything, you've quoted it, you've prayed it, you've done all the spiritual things, you've read all the books, and it takes four, five, six, seven years down that line when you know that you know God told you. 23 years ago, maybe I've mentioned this before, but if I didn't, I wanted to leave this for another day, but I won't. 23 years ago, I was driving in my van, running away from God, out of Pretoria, going towards, I think it's the R21 that takes the turn off to Johannesburg. And God showed me my daughter in an instant behind a piano worshiping with me. I was still smoking in the van. <laughs> I killed the cigarette, threw it out, called my dad and I'm coming home. I left Joburg moved back to, to Whitbank to come to him. 23 years of waiting on a word and a vision that God showed me of that little baby girl and this amazing woman. But there's been moments I've quoted it, I've prayed it, I've done it, I've been through the ups and downs, when you know everything and it still doesn't go your way. The problem is we, 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 our relationship, our faith is thin because we build it on just nice words and only perfect things. When the gospel itself is Jesus asleep in the boat with me. It's the very thing of the peace of God, knowing that God's timing is perfect. Don't try and make it your way. Amen. Don't release too early. Don't jump the gun when it's not. God, that business you want, but you forced it. I remember the first time I went to the USA, and I'm taking a little bit of time, but I know this word needs, people need this word. First time I went to the U.S., I wanted to be like everybody and go preach in the U.S., and then I went there and everything failed. And for two months, I lived off one dollar menu. Every, everything I arranged to go preach there failed because it wasn't the time. But I forced it. I wanted to go. I made a loan. I flew out. I got all the contacts, got everybody. Got there. Everything canceled on the day I landed there because I forced it. I forced the property. I lost it. I forced relationships. It failed. Some of you are in that place because you, you, I can't wait anymore. No, fat you in it's what come. Because you're not waiting to let God be the one to release that. You want that ministry. I've seen so many guys coming through this ministry. They sit here, they be part of it. God does not say release time, but we want our own ministry. And they leave and the ministry has a two, three year period of fantastic growth. And then what happens? It dies. There's no more ministry. They're gone. They lost, and it's sad because they could have been great if they just waited. Your relationship could be great if you just waited. That business could be great if you just waited. Some of you, I feel in the spirit, that's why I'm taking a little bit more time today. Just 
that's where God wants us to be because I don't know what tomorrow holds. But I know the one who holds tomorrow, right? It's such an old saying, but it's so true. What does it look like when it doesn't go your way? When you've had all the word and you've got everything there and soul is standing in front of you and you're like, ah, it's the moment God gave me my hand. But it's not God's moment. And you step out when that's too fast. It's not the time. We just close our eyes for a moment. What a word. What a timely word. I felt God give me a word for this year. It's a year of expansion. This, this sermon fits so well into that. Because some of you are going to get stretched. Some of you have been stretched. And you're like, I'm ready for 2024. And maybe it doesn't happen in January, but March is coming. Maybe it doesn't happen in March, but July is coming. L listen, some of you are just, you're there at that place. And you're like, this is the year. This is the moment. Just wait on him. Don't try and jump the gun. Don't run ahead of yourself. Just wait on the one who knows you. Because there is release coming. There is great breakthrough. Man, God's got all the time in the world. His kairos time can happen in a second. Don't get looking at the chronos. Don't look at the watch. Don't look at what it is. God's got this. 23 years later, man, God's got this. Father, I thank you that I just pray over people today. That this word will find entrance into heart. I thank you for lives that are going. Maybe this word is not for this moment. But in a year or two from now, they're going to stand in a moment where there is a retraction. Where there is that moment of reservation. The things that are in their life happening. And they will remember this day. To know that you will not leave us in that place. But there's release coming. There's release coming. There's release coming over. You've been praying so long for that miracle. Don't stop. Don't stop. You've been waiting. You've been waiting. You know that you know that you know that God has been speaking to you. But you're just in this moment. It's like, mm, I don't know. Father, I thank you that this word finds entrance. I thank you for such release over people. Lord, there's been word birthed into people's heart. I want to come in that place of incubation, Lord, that right now, some of you just, that word's lying there. Keep it there. Let it grow. Let it mature in you. Because at the right moment, it will be released. I thank you for that, Lord. Some of you young people here today. I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for this word. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, released over people. I thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. God is faithful, right? I'm watching over the audience and I'm seeing people wipe tears off. I'm seeing people shake their heads. I can see this word with so much So, Paul, thank you so much. Come on, let's honor him for this word this morning. What a word. What a word. May you have a blessed, blessed, blessed day. May it be the word just stir you up. And may this year be a wonderful, wonderful year for you. Bless you all. Thank you for coming. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching with us today as well. Bless you. Thank you.